good morning good afternoon good evening from wherever you are joining this talk either in person or virtually welcome to the talk i was hearing in the automotive world i am tvr prasad i work as a solution architect at kpit technologies i have more than 12 plus years of experience in android and linux based ivi and cockpit systems i follow the agile mailing list regularly to get myself acquainted with the latest happenings in agile I play around with my Outrider C2 and Dragonbird 410C in my free time. Before we move further, a few words about KPIT. We at KPIT have expertise in all the domains of automotive. 10,000 plus KPITians passionate about mobility and technology, 500 plus vehicle production programs, millions of cars running our software, and global presence. That speaks volumes about the work we do at KPIT. Now let's look at the agenda for today. First, we'll start off with an overview of IO Urine. We'll follow that up with where IO Urine can actually add benefits in automotive. We'll also look at the challenges which are hindering the adoption of IO Urine in automotive. Then we'll follow that up with questions. A few abbreviations and acronyms. Before I get into the talk, I will want to thank Stefano Garzarella for letting me use his slides from his talk that he has given at KVM Forum. After seeing the talk, I liked the slides and I thought I couldn't do any better. So I requested Stefano to permit me to use his slides. Thanks Stefano for letting me use your slides. So now let's look at what is the primary goal. With cockpits becoming the buzzword in the automotive industry, container-based cockpits and VM-based cockpits have come into existence. So handling IO effectively to extract maximum performance from the hardware is important and crucial in the cockpit world. With the ever increasing amount, number of ECUs and the new buses that these ECUs are connected on, handling IO effectively to extract maximum performance from the hardware is really, really crucial. With the mitigations that have been put in place for Spectre and Meltdown, System calls have become expensive and handling IO effectively to extract maximum performance from the hardware is really, really crucial. Is there anything in Linux that can help us achieve this primary goal? Thankfully, IO Uring helps us achieve this primary goal significantly. So what is IO Uring? IO Uring has been making headlines in the last couple of years in the Linux world. In fact, IO Uring has been touted as one of the one of the leading innovations in the Linux world in the last decade. A lot of experts believe IO Uring and eBPF will revolutionize programming in Linux in the next decade. Every morning I wake up to see IO Uring set up new benchmarks or break new bench or uh, break the existing benchmarks. Every kernel release, there are new features added to IO Uring. So IO Uring is definitely making headlines. Let's look at what is IO Uring. Before we get to IO Uring, we will also have to look at the traditional Linux IO model. As you see in this diagram, the app application requests the kernel using system calls like open, read, write, etc., which go to the FS, VFS and the page cache, uh, which decides whether it needs to go to the buffer based IO or it's a character IO or whatever it is and then processes the I.O. The I.O. that you see here, the read, write, etc. is synchronous I.O. Asynchronous I.O. also exists, but not used extensively apart from the storage world. Threads are used for, simple, for simulating the asynchronous behavior, but the system calls themselves are not really asynchronous. ePoll, poll, select based I.O. also is used extensively. So as you see, the system call performs a context switch into the kernel world. The kernel handles the system call and returns back the result to the application. And the application would actually wait in the same thread for the system call to complete. So as you see, Linux has been having synchronous IO traditionally. Now let's look at what IO Uring does differently. So IO Uring is an asynchronous IO interface that has been added to Linux with the kernel version 5.1. It is not only for block oriented IO, you could use IO Uring for 
file and network paste io as well there are set of pair of rings that are shared between the application and the kernel or the user face and the kernel called the submission queue and the completion queue three new system calls have been added io ring setup io ring register and io ring enter these are the three new system calls which have been added to make use of io ring in the latest versions of the linux we would recommend using liburing instead of the system calls directly as it hides the intricacies of using the system calls with this now let's look at the io ring operation in detail so whenever an application needs a system call to be performed the application would actually produce an sqe which is called a submission queue entry and fill in the details of the system call which are the opcode which refers to the system call that needs to be executed and the flags which describe the uh, how the system call needs to be executed the parameters to the system call like file descriptor address offset etc user data is something like a cookie is more or less like a cookie which helps relate the sqe the submission queue entry and the completion queue entry now once all the submission queue fields in submission queue entry are filled up the sqe tail is updated and the application invokes the io ring enter system call now once this is done there is a context switch into the kernel the kernel consumes the sqes updates sqe head processes the operation that has been requested in the opcode and then the kernel produces a completion queue entry updates the fields in the completion queue entry like the result of the system call and the user data that has been passed in the sqe and then the kernel also updates the completion queue tail now once this is done the application consumes the cqe entry and updates the completion queue head so as you see io ring is a pair of rings io ring uses a pair of rings between the kernel and the application to actually request the operation that needs to be performed and a separate ring to give the result of the operation requested back to the application area now let's look at the performance benefits that io ring gets and how does it get those performance benefits so io ring provides something called as resource registration so whenever a file descriptor is passed to a system call in the kernel a uh, internal reference to the file descriptor passed is actually extracted in the system call entry and released in the system call exit similarly whenever a buffer user buffer is actually passed to a system call the pages corresponding to that buffer that's passed are pinned on system call entry and unpinned on system call exit this happens for every system call that is done so to avoid this operation io ring uh, unnecessary operations io ring provides a way to pre register the buffers and file descriptors with the ring this way the need to pin and unpin the pages and extract the file uh, extract and release the file references for every system call can be avoided please note that when the uh, resources are registered the underscore fixed variant of functions for preparing the sqe need to be used for example underscore read underscore fixed underscore write underscore fixed are the functions that need to be used when using the resources which are already registered with io ring otherwise the operation would be like op read and op write okay this is one of the ways where io ring optimizes the cost for every system call io ring also provides what's called as linked commands to understand what is a linked command let me give an example consider a web server running in an iot device which needs to accept incoming connection request receive a request process the request and send the response and close the connection so there are four system calls that get executed here accept receive send and close now io ring provides a way to actually link all of these system calls together and just execute one system call in place of four system calls 
the system calls accept receive send and close can be chained and provided to the kernel in one system call and this helps in the number of system call reductions in reducing the number of system calls please note that the subsequent sqes are picked up only if the previous sqe is successful for example receive sqe is picked up only if accept is successful similarly send sqe is picked up only if receive is successful if for example accept fails for some reason the remaining operations in the link in the chain are not executed and the system call returns here itself with a failure okay. this brings tremendous in performance benefits in terms of the post specter and mill down mitigations the number of system calls are reduced and the io is definitely going to be performant <coughs> excuse me io ring also provides us with what what's called as pole io where in sq pole there is a kernel thread that is used to pole the submission queue for any new additions or any new additions or any new submission queue entries added to the submission queue this way this helps in very low latency use cases where instead of doing a system call to let the kernel know about a new submission queue entry the kernel keeps polling the submission queue at regular intervals to know if there are new submission queue entries mind you this definitely has an impact on the cpu usage but as i mentioned this is for cases where the latency is of primary or the prime Uh, is of prime importance last but not least one of the major important factors that io ring has supported is lsm auditing which means that io ring objects can be used with mandatory access control applications can actually apply labels to io ring objects and write sc linux and smack rules and policy so that mandatory access control allows only the processes which are allowed to access the rings to access them and read and write to them so this is very very important in terms of automotive security so as you see io ring has all that it needs to be adapted into the automotive industry io ring has been adopted by android for their software update implementation in android 13 where they use it for merging the snapshots uh in the OTA world they also use a user space block driver which is based on io ring for the software update and as we see the code the fastboot fastboot utility also shows code pertaining to io ring this shows that android has adopted io ring for their use cases similarly rust c++ have also adopted io ring various databases have also started adopting io ring for their performance benefits now let's look at where io ring can add value in the automotive industry are there any use cases that io ring can add value in the automotive industry we have identified couple of use cases where we believe io ring could add value in automotive and started gathering data about the performance benefits that io ring can bring in with these use cases the first use case is about media indexing whenever a usb or a sd card with media content is plugged in into a infotainment system the media scanner or the media indexer kicks in which iterates through the directories to identify the media content either through the mime header or through the file extension and once it identifies a particular media or particular media content it extracts the metadata of the media the album art etc from the file and then stores that into a database now typically storage devices media storage devices which have which are of gbs in size which could have songs ranging from 1000 to 5000 songs typically will have to undergo this whole process let's say i have 5000 songs in 
at least thousand directories the thousand directories have to be traversed each song needs to be picked up each file needs to be opened up extract the data the metadata needs to be extracted and all that detail needs to go into a database this is lot lots and lots of io huge amount of io is involved in this process all this can be done with io uring in a more performant way where the number of system calls can be brought down by chaining the operations of the opening of the file getting the metadata etc all these operations can be chained in you know, iouring and lot of performance benefit can be reaped through it mind you that read dir and lc are the two system calls which a lot of media indexing open source components use but these are currently not supported by iouring it will be really good to have these supported in iouring so this is one of the use cases where we believe io uring can definitely add value now let's look at a reference architecture for a container based cockpit before we actually look at the next use case as you see here we are actually considering a container based cockpit which is uh, running on a multi core soc we have multiple containers like sysman container cluster container ivi container we also have an aclb vehicle processor which provides uh, the can details over spi or uart there is also this safety monitoring island which provides or which interacts with the linux kernel over shared memory which is typically an rp message based interface so now when we actually do a software update for this or when we want to do a software update for the container or hypervisor based system there is definitely lot of io involved to download flash and verify the image there is huge amounts of io involved and not only the primary system the other issues connected to the ivi or the cockpit and the issues are connected on various buses so there is lot of io involved in terms of doing a software update also if ab update is the preferred solution of tier 1 or oem the pack partitions also need to be updated on a successful reboot of the system for example to make this statement clear let's say the system boots up with from the a partition and the software update updates the b partition and now on booting successfully from the b partition the a partition also needs to be updated so there is huge amount of io that is involved with respect to software update for example if you look at a hypervisor based or a vm based cockpit again the vms could get updated again in in terms of container the containers could get updated the aclb uh, component could get updated the safety monitoring island could get updated so there is lot of io involved in software update and io uring definitely can play a huge and significant role in software update so that is the reason we have started evaluating the impact of io uring on software update now let's look at the next use case as you have seen in our previous use uh, in our reference architecture we are using container based system and we are using binder for inter and intra container rpc so let's take a use case when a media is playing on the aivi the cluster is updated with the duration of the song the now playing metadata of the song and a file list or a browsing list for the songs is also displayed on the cluster hmi now for a song which which is of duration 5 minutes 300 messages over binder are sent to indicate the duration of the song to the cluster for example for every second the duration update is actually posted to the cluster for the hmi to get updated this gives you an idea of the number of rpc messages that could happen between containers or intra containers now this if the transactions of the rpc are not optimized the binder transaction for the rpc are not optimized 
there is going to be significant cost in terms of IO. So we are focusing on optimizing the binder RPC transaction times using IO Uring. Binder transaction typically has or uses a single IOctal or multiple IOctals to complete the transaction. With the addition of the async IOctal support with IO Uring op Uring command, we want to actually see how uh, we can leverage this to make the transaction times of binder optimized. Using the NVM driver as reference, NVM pass through driver as reference, we are trying to implement the IO Uring command as an async IOctal and see and implement the binder transactions in the binder driver using this to evaluate the performance benefits that we would get with using IO Uring for binder. Not only binder, IO Uring can definitely play a significant role in any other RPC. For example, RPCs like Dbus, Cap'n Proto, which use sockets as their transport layer, can also benefit a lot from IO Uring. The buffers can be registered, descriptors can be pre registered with the <coughs> ring and performance benefits can be evaluated with that. We know that Cap and Proto Dbus provide interfaces over or use Unix and INET domain sockets as the transport layer. Definitely the transactions or the socket messages or the system calls can be chained together to extract the performance benefits from IO Uring. We are currently trying to evaluate the performance of IO Uring zero copy send on Cap and Proto. We will definitely publish the numbers as and when we have those. Again, not for containers, but we are also evaluating if VSOC sockets can also benefit from IO Uring. We are currently using VSOC for RPC between VMs in a hypervisor based or VM based cockpit. We are, have our own RPC which is based on sockets uh, between VMs and we are trying to evaluate the performance that benefit that we would get with using IO Uring and VSOC. Moving ahead, I will want to show you a small snippet from a CAN over Ethernet or WLAN bridge that's taken from a presentation given by Oliver Harktop in an AGL summit. As you see here, there is a socket, rock and socket that's open. And there is a WLAN socket that's open for a network interface, a UDP socket. Now the typical bind and connect that's already implemented. You have a while one here, which actually reads the messages from CAN socket and writes the same message over to the WLAN socket. This is a simple CAN over WLAN bridge. As you see here, read and write are two system calls that are needed for this bridge to be realized. The same can be actually realized with one system call in IO Uring. Let's look at that. As you see here, in this example, the while implementation just gets an SQE, the so submission queue entry, prepares the read request sets the flag to IO SQI IO link, which indicates that the operation is actually chained with the subsequent system call, which means that this and these operation need to be done together. And the user data is set. Now a new submission in queue entry is created and the write request is created. The user data is set and with one IO during submit, with just one system call, you submit both these requests to the kernel. Now, the previous code snippet, which took two system calls, now just takes one system call. And consider the amount of traffic that you would have on CAN if the number of transactions that are happening or the number of packets that are received on CAN are 100. You would have 200 system calls in the previous transaction 
and in this current transaction you would just have 100 system calls mind there could also be other optimization from the previous code snippet which are not shown here for lack of space but the previous code snippet can still be optimized to link a lot of those system calls and just have a couple of system calls we also are looking at various other use cases one of them is an EAVB based use case where we have telematics systems that are connected over Ethernet. There are telematics calls, there are lip sync audio based use cases with EAVB. We are trying to evaluate if I wiring can add value in those use cases. We also have a couple of cockpit related use cases in both hypervisor and container based cockpits, which we are trying to evaluate and will take up after the current set of use cases are evaluated. There are some use cases around camera, ADAS camera, where we believe IO Uring can definitely play a significant role. And as I mentioned, we will take up all these use cases once we have the correct current set of use cases evaluated and modified according to according to the latest IO Uring. Now let's look at the challenges involved in adopting to IO Uring. One of the major challenges with respect to using IO Uring is it requires the latest and the greatest kernel versions. And very few SOC vendors support the latest versions of the kernel or provide the BSP with the upstream version of the kernel. This is one of the major hindrance in adopting IO Uring in the automotive industry. The second challenge is the dependent open source libraries also need to adapt to IO Uring. To explain this, let me take a use case. We have our media indexing engine, which is placed on taglib. Now, taglib also needs to adapt to IO Uring for our media indexing engine to effectively use IO Uring. Similarly, other open source implementations like SQLite, etc. need to adapt their implementations to IO Uring so that the middleware and the application components built on top of them reap the benefits of IO Uring. Last but not the least, developers are still not comfortable with the async IO programming model that IO Uring brings in. They are still comfortable with the threading and the synchronous IO programming model. This is something where the industry and the community need to work together to help developers get comfortable with the async IO programming model of IO Uring. To understand the challenges in more detail, let me walk you through an example. I have set up an SSH session into my Odroid C2, which is running Linux 5.9 kernel and an ambient distribution. We have two versions of taglib, one which supports IO Uring and one which uses the traditional IO model. So now let's try to run an application called as tag reader, which reads out the tags from a provided MP3 file. So let me run the tag reader on an MP3 file. As you see, it took around 30 milliseconds to read the tags from warning.mp3 using the traditional tag lib. Now let's look at the same statistics with an IO Uring based tag lib. It took almost a similar time considering environmental factors. I would still consider this to be same. But why is that we are not seeing the benefit, performance benefit with respect to the tag lib that uses IO Uring? To explain this, I will have to walk you through the source code of tag lib and also the stress of tag reader. Let's look at the source code of tag lib. As you see here, tag lib uses the function read file, which is a uh, read based on the C file API. 
and the function read block actually uses read file to read the data from the file to also explain this in detail to extract the mpeg mp3 metadata as you see here taglib uses seek which is an lseek implementation followed by read so both these are synchronous operations and as i mentioned earlier lseek is something that is not yet supported by io uring and read is actually synchronous read here because the moment you see here read is expected to provide data after it returns straight away okay so with no disrespect intended to any of the taglib developers taglib was never designed for handling async io to make this statement clear let me actually walk you through the stack trace of the tag reader application so as you see the tag reader application uses lseek and io uring uh, read operations that were submitted with io uring continuously if you we were to reap the benefits of io uring the read operations at various offsets could actually be chained as io uring lets us pass the offset as parameter to read so instead of doing an lseek various op read operations could be chained together at various offsets and executed with one system call this is how we can actually extract maximum performance benefit with io uring but as i said and as i've shown the current taglib implementation is not designed for async io which would which is something that will be needed for us to submit multiple io requests at once to io uring hope this makes uh, hope this makes understand the challenge in a clear manner in conclusion i would want to say that automotive systems involve a lot of io and io uring helps make io performant the automotive industry and the community need to come together to drive to drive the development of new features in io uring and trigger widespread adoption for example as i mentioned earlier read dir lseek are two operations which are not supported but are needed by various media indexing engines so the community and the industry can work together to make sure that these operations are supported by io ring and upstreamed so the collaboration between the automotive industry and the community is very very crucial to develop and bring in new features into io uring and trigger widespread adoption there are challenges with using io uring and those challenges can be overcome with the industry and the community working together last but not the least io uring is not the solution for everything it needs to be used with care these are the words that ens himself mentioned in the kernel recipe stock that he has given this year with that i will want to say let us know your io ring use cases please write to us please share your feedback on this talk and thank you thank you for letting me present on io ring thanks